Now we all make mistakes when constructing our layout, even if we built several layouts before. But the thing is to learn from our mistakes. When starting off in the hobby, one of the most common mistakes is choosing the wrong scale. It's best to measure how much space you have available and work out how much room you'll need for now and for future expansion. The problem is lots of beginners start collecting one scale only to discover that there are more parts and accessories available for another scale. They either start again or start mixing scales. That's a bad choice. So it's best if you get things right from day one. My next piece of advice is to have a picture in your mind of what you want your layout to look like before you start. Choose what you want the railroad to represent before you race out and buy something. Decide whether you want your layout to resemble a modern day railroad or whether you want it to depict a time in history. Do you want to operate steam engines or diesel locomotives? Do you want to operate DCC or DC? Do you want your trains to move passengers, freight or maybe both? And what type of landscape do you want on your layout? Mountains, farmland, a cityscape or maybe a small town? Think carefully about what you would like to include and what will work best in the space you have available. What sort of buildings or bridges do you want to include? Do you want some factories, a fire station, a church, a container port, a mining town? The list of possibilities is endless. Do you want your layout on one level or maybe multi-levels or possibly the space is better suited to a shelf layout? What track configuration would work best? Maybe a figure of eight design, a point to point track, a twice around layout or a dog bone design? Do you want a main line with maybe a branch line? Do you want to include sidings or perhaps a storage yard or turntable? As you can see, there are plenty of options to consider before you get started and it's best to visualise how the finished layout will look before you get started. Research and planning can be really enjoyable if you go about it the right way. Also, careful planning can save you money and frustration later. As an example, a common mistake is to construct gradients that are too steep. What happens is, a locomotive will run smoothly along the track and then begin climbing a steep slope and then stop or struggle to climb further. If your gradient is going to be seen, then keep it down to about 2%. If your gradient is hidden from view, like inside a mountain or on a helix, you can perhaps use a steeper gradient. The weight ratio on a model train layout actually allows for a much steeper gradient than you would find used on a full-size railroad. You probably won't be operating a hundred car trains like you might see on a real railroad, so your model trains can usually be expected to climb steeper gradients. Problems also occur when track curves are too tight. The shorter locomotives and freight cars can operate tight curves, but your longer passenger trains run the risk of derailing on tighter curves. From my experience, it's best to do plenty of planning and test everything before you fix down the track. The key is to enjoy the hobby and use your time to build your layout the way you want it to be.